It's to us that we are a people of slavery. But it was that same gospel that was used as a tool of enslaving us that really helped us to find our liberation. Because if you really understood the true essence of the gospel, then one would know that the gospel is liberating. And that there's a message of liberation throughout the leaves of the scripture that says to us that if we but cling to the cross and look toward the hills from which cometh our help, deliverance would be on its way. The gospel was the wrong tool for the oppressor to use to oppress us. Because if they had known that Jesus stood up one day and said that the spirit of the Lord was upon me and it has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And to set at liberty those who are in captivity. Then they would have found another tool. Because you can't use religion to enslave anybody because religion in its true essence sets one free. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad that they made that mistake in their oppressive ways. To use what God laid forth by inspiration through the prophets of old and the writers of the New Testament. To try to hold me down because it was in God's word that our foreparents heard that you may have chains on my hands. You may put shackles on my feet, but if God sets my heart free, I'm free indeed. Oh, we came through some dark moments as a race of people. And we need to spend some time sharing with our children and our children's children the road in which we have tried it because they need to know that because you can sit on Wall Street today, you need not forget that there were days when we couldn't even walk on the streets. You need to know that we came up on the rough side of the mountain so that when you get to your fine plush office on Wall Street, you won't forget that it was God who made the way for us to be in the places we're in today. We as African Americans need to recognize today that it wasn't the laws that were passed that gave us our opportunities. It wasn't the amendments to the Constitution that gave us the opportunities we have today. It was the divine hand of the Creator who knew that He did not create us subservient to anybody, but in His eyesight, he created all mankind in his own image. I don't know how theologically you can rationalize that one group of people is subservient to another group of people. When you say that all man was created in the image of God, when you declare that there's a subservient group and there's a superior group in society by race, by creed, by gender, then what you are saying is that God is split. That half of God is superior and the other half of God is inferior. But I come to tell you that if that's your theology, your theology is warped and off basis. For my God is not superior and inferior my God is superior period my God is great he's almighty and he made every 
man and woman in his image. Oh, we were created in his image and in his likeness. But we have forgotten, my brothers and sisters, who we're supposed to look like. We're so busy trying to assimilate that we have forgotten who we ought to look like. Too many of us have the wrong idea of how we can be liberated. I want to pause for a few moments because there's a book called The Miseducation of the Negro that highlights how we're so messed up in our minds as to how to have true liberation. Too many of us think that we have to look like the oppressor to be liberated. You're tired of your dark brown eyes. So you go out and you buy his eyes. Used to be a time when we only had a couple of colors of our hair. Black. Some of us had naturally red hair. And then because of time, we had gray hair. Used to be proud of the fact of how your hair looked. Now, we buy all kind of hair. to tell you, my brothers and sisters, you can die fried lead to the side. If you don't have the real stuff on the inside, then you'll never be liberated. Liberation does not come how you look on the outside. Liberation comes when you feel good about yourself on the inside. Don't care how I look on the outside, but if I know that I look like God on the inside, then I know that I'm liberated. I'm somebody. We need to teach our young brothers and sisters that you can put it all on the outside and concentrate on putting nothing on the inside. You will just be a pretty good looking outside individual as a showpiece to the world. But if you don't have anything of substance on the inside, then you'll never be able to make a contribution to this world. We need to know today that God has some good news for our people. God says to us in 1993 that although oppression and prejudice is still on every corner, that I'm still the liberator. Although your hearts may be broken from some circumstance of life that has penetrated and pierced your soul. 
He wants you to know that he's a heart fixer. God says to us that, that I got good news for you this morning. That if your eye is on me, that I want you to know that what Sister Vivian was saying this morning, that he wants you to know that his eye is also on the sparrow. And that he's still watching over us. We who are in the African American tradition, at one point in our history, we thought that the way to worship God was to adopt the patterns of worship of somebody else. But I come to tell you today, my brothers and my sisters, we who are in the African American tradition, our style of worship resembles more what God would have worship to truly be like. For God said in the book of Psalms that you ought to make a joy for noise unto the Lord. But when we got our opportunities to act like we were educated, we thought making joy for noises were ignorant. We thought making joy for noises were too emotional. But I come to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, you and I need to reach back and grab the vigor, the vitality of yesterday. Grab the energy of your mamas and your daddies. Bring it into 1993 and make a job for noise unto the Lord. For it was joyful praising that helped your foreparents in the cotton fields. It was joyful praising that helped them on the slave markets. It was joyful praising that helped them when your husband, their husbands would be home to death. It was joyful praising that helped them when their families been sold from here to yonder. It was joyful praising that helped them to sing all of God's children. Got shoes, all of God's children. Got rose. When I get to heaven, I'm gonna sing and shout. I'm gonna walk all over God's kingdom. It was joyful praising that helped us to be where we are today. It was Richard Allen. The founder of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. And every now and then we need to say that. We need to say it all the way out. Too many folk look at AME and don't know what it really stands for. But I come to tell you that. It was the African Methodist Episcopal Church that started off in a blacksmith shop singing those old hymns, Come ye that love the Lord. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me a charge to keep I have a God to glorify a never dying soul to save and fit it for the sky it was in that old blacksmith shop that we learned that we were somebody it was in that blacksmith shop that we heard good news from the Lord that we don't have to be a slave, uh, that you don't have to walk down, uh, look down, uh, act down, uh, be low down. Uh, you can lift your head up, uh, all ye gates, uh, and say glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I come to tell you today. That God still has some good news. When I look around 
us and recognize that the advances we have already made that somebody is trying to turn the clock back and put us back where we used to be but I come to tell you once you are free in Jesus you're free indeed and as long as I know that King Jesus sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty I can never be oppressed for Jesus said when he introduced his ministry to mankind that I'm not here on my own power but the spirit of the Lord is on me and I come to tell you today that same spirit that was on Jesus he pours himself on mankind every day and you can stand up and tell the world that I'm somebody because the spirit of the Lord is on me the spirit of the Lord shook my dungeon the spirit of the Lord shook my dungeon caused the sin of oppression to fall from me and I'm free not only that but Jesus said that he has anointed me to preach the gospel uh, to the poor uh, which says to me uh, I may never uh, have a million dollars uh, but I don't have to be rich uh, for the gospel uh, to apply to my life uh, that the gospel uh, is for the poor man uh, the gospel uh, is for the rich man uh, the gospel uh, is for the white man uh, the gospel uh, is for the black man uh, the gospel uh, is for Wall Street uh, and Hill Street uh, and My Street uh, and Church Street uh, and Bruton Boulevard. The gospel uh, is for everybody, everybody, everybody. The gospel. It's for the poor. And not only that, uh, but Jesus said, uh, it's for those uh, who are broken hearted uh, you may be broken hearted uh, the racism of this world uh, has broken your heart uh, you're still the first to be fired uh, and the last to be hired uh, but don't you worry uh, opportunities uh, you thought you should have had uh, but somebody else uh, picked you to them uh, don't give up uh, I heard uh, I said I heard uh, that Jesus uh, means uh, the broken heart uh, that the gospel uh, is preached uh, to the broken hearted uh, for I heard uh, I said I heard uh, that Jesus uh, will heal uh, the broken heart uh, the gospel uh, will heal uh, the broken heart uh, don't you hear uh, the gospel uh, saying to you uh, come uh, all uh, ye who are heavy laden uh, and I'll, I I'll, uh, will give you rest uh, take uh, my yoke uh, upon you uh, and lean uh, on me uh, for my yoke uh, is easy my burden uh, is light uh, I heard uh, I said I heard uh, blessed uh, are the poor in spirit uh, for they shall uh, see God uh, blessed uh, are the peacemakers uh, for they shall uh, inherit the earth uh, blessed uh, are they who moan uh, and then he has more good news uh, for he says I have been anointed uh, to preach deliverance uh, do you hear me? You ain't got no business uh, with your head down. Uh, you have no business uh, with a pessimistic attitude. Uh, you have no business uh, crying the blues. Uh, 
you have no business uh, talking about what you can do, uh, what they won't let you do. Uh, hold your head up. Uh, put your show If you would like to obtain a copy of today's service, write to St. Mark African Methodist green. Episcopal Church, 1968 Luton Boulevard, Orlando, Florida, 32805. Or if you desire additional information about our ministries, call 407-422-6941.